some developing news that we're following for you. We told you just a few moments ago that we were waiting for the Justice Department and Eric Holder with regard to Cleveland. And this was a, an investigation into the police in Cleveland. The findings of a Justice Department investigation of police in Cleveland over possible civil rights violations such as excessive use of force. Uh, we have just within the last couple of moments received word that the Justice Department has found Cleveland police systematically engaged in excessive use of force. They are still going into the press conference right now. This all actually began. This is not something that began with the shooting of Tamir Rice, the 12-year-old boy. This began in March of 2013. This goes back to a 2012 police chase and a shooting that ended in a hail of 137 bullets and the deaths of two unarmed citizens. This investigation began on March the 14th. So again, they are still having the press conference at this moment. And the Justice Department has found that Cleveland police systematically engaged in an excessive use of force. We'll be following that on news and a whole lot more right here on Midpoint. So please stay with us. All right now, there's no doubt the chokehold placed around the neck of Eric Garner was the trigger for his death. But there are other factors involved here, and there are also parts of the entire story that we need to dig into. Let's do this. From the medical kit bag and much more, let's welcome back into Midpoint the chief medical officer for Cooper University Healthcare and radio talker at KYW in Philadelphia, Dr. Anthony Mazzarelli. Dr. Maz, good to see you again. Good to see you, Ed. Doctor, let's get right to the Eric Gardner case. And it's a little distressing when you hear people uh, say that, well, wait a minute, he was overweight, he had asthma, and there are certain other reasons for him, for his death. And then you look at the videotape and you see what we have seen in this over and over again. From a medical consideration only, tell us what you saw. So here's what I saw. I saw there are two kinds of, first and quickly, there's two kinds of chokeholds. There's a blood chokehold and what's called an air chokehold. So an air choke hold is one where you would actually push on someone and have your arm around their neck and push on essentially their trachea or their larynx or their windpipe so they can't get air in and out. The other is a blood choke hold where you push on their carotids, they don't get oxygen to the brain from blood flow, and they sort of gradually sort of pass out. That's the sort of Dread Pirate Roberts, Andre the Giant choke hold. That's not what we saw in that video. What I saw in that video uh, was someone who didn't gradually sort of pass out. They were saying they couldn't breathe, they couldn't breathe, which if there was a chokehold going on, it would mean it would have been an air chokehold, one that was pushing to try to, that wouldn't allow oxygen to come in and out. Now, your question about what else could contribute, well, if you have poor physiologic reserve, if you have lung problems, if you have heart problems, it would mean that maybe you are more likely to have a quicker bad outcome from having a deprivation of oxygen from that kind of chokehold. Now, the thing we don't know is the defense attorneys for the officer are saying it wasn't a choke hold, it was a different kind of hold, and it had to do with the fact that he was larger and the way he was on the ground. So that's the kind of fact finding that typically a jury would find that we that we didn't we don't know about here because this was something that was done in secret. Is it though when you look at what Representative Peter King said, the New York representative, where he said that, and I quote, if he had not had asthma and a heart condition and was so obese, almost definitely he would not have died from this. Do you find that a little insensitive? And also perhaps the fact that Representative King is not a doctor. He's merely just playing one on TV at this point, that he's making an awful lot of jumps forward here. Yeah, and I think uh, you, it, there, uh, it would make sense that they're contributing factors. I don't think you could say, but for those things, this wouldn't have happened. You can certainly say, but for the incident with the police, he would probably not have died at that moment. That you could probably confidently say. How much those other things are risk factors, I don't know. They certainly may have, have made him more likely to have a bad outcome. I, don't, I think it's hard to judge how much they were a contributor. All right, let's go ahead and move on to a couple of other stories here. And this one I found rather interesting. I know that you're looking at this as well. The gentleman's name is James Watson. He is known to many as the father of DNA for his scientific discoveries. He won the Nobel Prize 50 years ago, and now he's putting the Nobel Prize on the auction block. He wants to make about $2.5 million. Why would you want to get rid of a Nobel Prize? So James Watson's an interesting character. So Watson and Crick, the two discoverers in 1953, that DNA is a double helix. Um, he, in 2007, he made remarks that were uh, considered incredibly racist. He basically said he was concerned for the country of Africa uh, because people of uh, the black race are less intelligent, and that he said anyone who's ever worked with anyone who was black would know that. Um, obviously, those remarks were not met kindly, so it's lowered his ability to his main source of income, which was speaking and making engagements. Then, of course, he gave one of the worst apologies I've ever seen, in which he apologized 
because he said, quote, you're not supposed to say that. Um, and therefore, he's basically been, in his words, a non-person. And now he wants to, he wants the money. He wants to sort of get the attention. Uh, and now he's, sell he's selling that Nobel Prize. $2.5 million is the asking. Um, and he wants to use it to buy a, a piece of artwork and as a source of income. So interesting character. It shows that you could be a great scientist um, with respect to science, but, but maybe other aspects of what you do are not so noble. By the way, just so that people know, in a 2000 interview with the Sunday Times, he was talking about a gloomy prospect for Africa. And he said, while he hoped everyone was truly equal, quote, people who have to deal with black employees find this not true, unquote. Just so that everybody is aware of exactly what he said and why this whole charge has come down here. The government's talking about easing a 31-year-old ban on blood donations from gay men. Will this happen and why? I, th I think it probably will. Uh, Health and Human Services panel recommended, so now an FDA panel would look at it. Uh, the reason why uh, blood donations uh, from homosexuals were banned was because of not knowing a lot about HIV when it was put in 31 years ago. There are other countries that have now lifted that ban. With If you have been abstinent for one year, uh, then you can accept that blood because of the window and time in which you see or convert. And, you know, we've gotten a lot better in the science of detecting infections in blood. Um, there's, in the countries that have done this, they haven't seen a rise in infections. So it wouldn't surprise me if that ban, that ban ends up lifted, which should increase the blood supply by about 2 or 4%, depending on whether they do a year or six months, um, which doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, a life-saving measure, um, you know, can make a big difference when you, when you run low. Dr. Maz, do this one in 30 seconds from Popular Science. Women's bra sizes correlate to their spending habits. So Alibaba, one of the biggest companies in the world now in China, is big data. So they didn't do a study academically. They did a study using the immense amount of data they have. And what they found is that women that bought larger bra sizes had larger spending habits of all types of spending habits. And the question becomes, um, what is the theory on why that would be? Um, you could think of a few of them, but that's the data point that seems pretty hardwired. The question is why? I am always want to make a smart aleck remark at certain times. However, Dr. Maz, you're going to find out that this will not be one of them. I'd like to thank Agreed. you very much. As always, Dr. Maz, if we don't get a chance to talk to you between now and then, a very Merry Christmas and a happy holiday to you and your family. Thank you, Ed. All right, take care. Short time out, and we return with the sheriff who refuses to back down in calling the Attorney General of the United States a race baiter. That and so much more coming up right here on Midpoint, where we do question everything.